Grand Design has given us a brand new fifth wheel product for 2024 in this 2024 Grand Design Influence. And this here is going to be a great offering for a family looking to travel or even travel full time, live full time in a fifth wheel RV. Let's go take a look at why. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another video. For y'all that are new here, my name is Miles with Firmly Unbound. And for you returning viewers, I am back in Dallas, Texas. We are here at McLean's RV Superstores. This is one of the preferred dealers that I sought out to work with in hopes that when you're ready to purchase your next RV, you would trust me enough to go where I would recommend that you go. So if you are in Texas or Oklahoma and looking for your next fifth wheel RV, travel trailer, or motorhome, really any of your RV needs, McLean's is here to help you out. I'm here to help you out. And I sought out working with McLean's because I just believe that they're a great dealership to work with. They're family owned. They're a little bit smaller. Those are the kind of dealerships I prefer to work with and that I would trust more buying my RV from, which is why I choose to work with them. So if you are interested in this RV at any point in time in this video and want more information, you can text me at the number on the screen. It'll also be down below in the comments as well. And I'm really excited because we are taking a look at this brand new product from Grand Design with this Grand Design Influence. This exact model is a 3704BH. So this is going to be their bunkhouse model from Grand Design Influence. And let me just give you a little bit of a rundown if you don't understand the hierarchy of the Grand Design product. So in their fifth wheels, you can see we have reflection over here as well. So they're going to have a couple different mid-sized fifth wheels here with their Grand Design reflection lineup. And then in their fifth wheels, they used to have the Grand Design Solitude and the Solitude S Class. So you can see the Solitudes here, and I think they have a used S Class back here. Let me zoom in real quick. You can see that Solitude S Class right there. Now, an S Class was basically like a stripped down version of a Solitude, which got a little bit confusing. So what they have done is they kind of gave the S Class its own individual line here with this new product that is the Grand Design Influence. So I'm really excited about this. I think it got some really nice fresh touch-ups to it. It has a different exterior look to it as well than the Solitude does. It's a little bit more plain and simple, which I think a lot of you will appreciate. Now, as we go through this, because this is a brand new product, I'm very curious your thoughts on what you think, whether there's things that you like or things that you don't like, definitely let me know down below in the comments. And again, if you are interested in this RV at any point in time and live in Texas or New Mexico, McLean's has five different locations where you can come shop for your next RV. You can also buy your next RV online. You can text me at the number that is down below in the comments at any time if you are interested in this RV. So as we go through this, I'm gonna kind of run through some of the differences between this and a solitude because a lot of this is gonna come down to one, what, your kind of preferences for just the taste of the RV. The two is going to be the price point where before I've even seen the price on this thing, I can tell this is gonna be a little bit less expensive than a Solitude for a few different reasons. I'm gonna get into those reasons right away right now. So the first thing I see is the pin box up front. On this Influence, you have a Rhino pin box up here, which doesn't really have any shock absorption built into it. And then on the Solitude, you can see here, they have that Moride pin box that is going to have more shock absorption built into it. So a little bit more heavy duty um, pin box on the Solitude. Another big thing that I noticed as well, I should have stayed zoomed in there for you. You can see the Solitude, it has a drop frame on it. And you can see, let's walk over here. You can see how big the storage compartment is on a Solitude compared to this Influence. So as you walk over here, it is really, really tall on the storage compartment here. And when you come over to the Influence, you can see because there is no drop frame, you don't have that floor that drops down the same way through here. So those are two immediate differences that I noticed. Although this is still a full profile fifth wheel, it has a full profile front cap. The roof line is flat all the way up to this front cap, has a solid molded fiberglass one piece front cap there. And then it does have just a slight slant going back down the roof line, just like a solitude would as well. Um, those are the two exterior differences I noticed right away. Oh, and another one also is the leveling system. On the solitude, you're going to have a hydraulic auto leveling system. And then on the influence, you are going to have an electric auto leveling system. Now, depending on the size of the floor plan here, you're going to have 
either a six point electric auto leveling system with the influence or a four point electric auto leveling system with the influence. Now these are still big fifth wheels. So you can see here the exact weight on these fifth wheels. The unloaded weight is 14,286 pounds and fully loaded is 16,800 pounds. That's going to give you a cargo carrying capacity of 2,454 pounds. So with something this size, I definitely recommend a one ton truck to tow something like this at it is heavy, it is a big fifth wheel, and the overall length on this thing is like 41 feet, nine inches, I believe. So just saw that in the door. So it's just under 42 feet for the total length. So definitely a big fifth wheel here. Really nice look up front. You do have the LED lights that come down here just like the Solitude does, but it is a little bit different color with that gray as opposed to the black on the Solitude. And then again, just really simple graphics. Um, another difference you can notice is on the Solitude, you're going to have frameless windows. And then on this Influence, you're going to have framed in windows. So a little bit difference or a little bit of a difference there as well. You have two awnings on this Influence model here. So awning on this slide out here that will come out and awning here. You're going to have two 30 pound propane bottles, one on each side of the fifth wheel. So you can see that propane bottle there in this compartment. Slam latch baggage doors on your storage compartment here so as we get this opened up magnets to hold that in place there so that will stay open on its own and as you come down underneath here you have your storage compartment access into your heating and water lines through there with a quick easy door to get into you have your tire pressure monitoring system here you have an led light strip that runs through here and then all of your aluminum framing welded on both sides of the frame and you can see there is heat ducting in here as well so this is a climate controlled area through this space you have a light here that is motion activated as well. So you can just leave this on at all times and it will just turn on whenever you walk by here. So you'll have that there. That's nice and convenient. Spray port here for external water source on your campsite. And that's just about everything through this space. Back up front, you have your storage space up front here as well with spot for two batteries there. You're going to have a battery disconnect switch here. That looks like that is going to be your solar charge controller there. And prep to add an inverter up here as well. So mostly just a wide open storage space through here and spot for batteries in this compartment. This is going to be metal clips to hold this closed and then you'll have that plastic latch there to hold it open. And then you have two switches here for your lights up front. Love that these have this little rubber cover over the switches so dust and debris doesn't you know, mess those up over time. Come down this way, you have a uh, more ride step above solid step going in and out of the fifth wheel. And I love that it's coming with this bigger grab handle. This also does have the laminates, laminated sidewall here on your slide out box. So a nice solid um, laminated sidewall there. Outdoor speakers on this side. So you have two marine grade Rockford Fosgate outside speakers. And with this bunk model, you get an absolutely killer outdoor kitchen that I really love. Really the only thing this outdoor kitchen doesn't have is a microwave, which I don't think is a big deal at all. But like that you get this kind of beverage fridge here that has the glass door so you can see what's in there. That's a really big fridge. You can fit a lot of drinks and beverages in there, snacks and whatnot. You do have a pull out griddle cooktop as well. So pull this out and this griddle will flip over. So you'll have that griddle cooktop there. Also like that it's not sitting too high up off the ground it's actually at a comfortable cooking height is some outdoor kitchens they just put that thing so dang high it just doesn't even make sense you have a little spot here to store some sponges and cleaning items absolutely huge countertop space and then i love the outdoor sink i think this is just so practical the sink is a little bit small but this is a great place where you can wash your hands outside rinse off utensils rinse off cups different things like that also turn on these lights here have a spot where you can mount a TV if you wanted to put a TV outside or plug in a TV. And then all of this looks like it is solid hardwood on the cabinetry and construction out here. See all your storage, cabinets and drawers out here look, or I guess just cabinets, look exactly like they do on the inside. So they have the soft close feature to them as well. And they have a little bit darker color out here, which is nice so it doesn't look more dirty over time. You're going to have a standard entry step here for your second entrance. This is going to be the entrance into the half bath here that is also connected to the bunk room. And kind of interesting too, you can see there, there's a little 
support arm that prevents this door from swinging into the slide out there. So that's going to protect that. And you have an LED light up over the door so you can see coming in and out of there in darker conditions. Come along to the back. It has a really nice looking back end as well. Just very simple. Has prep to add a backup camera. Does have a towing hitch off the back as well. So this is rated to tow 3,000 pounds with this towing hitch off the back or you can use it as an accessory hitch. And then as we come along this way, you can see three slide outs on this side of your fifth wheel. And then it does have three ACs up on the roof as well. So you're going to have AC in the living room, AC in the bunk room, and AC in the bedroom up front. Coming down underneath here, you're going to have all black wheels that look really nice with a Cooper H-rated tire. So really good quality tire. I love the look of the tires and wheels on here. Looks really nice. You have a Moride CRE 3000 suspension system. So that is an upgraded suspension system here. And then as we turn to the right here, you'll be able to see you have a dump valve back here. This is going to be for black and gray tanks for your half bath in the back. You also have a spot underneath there to store your sewer hose back there as well. You will have a fully enclosed underbelly, so all your water tanks and water lines will sit above that enclosed underbelly. And then you're going to have another dump valve right here that's going to be for black and gray tanks for your bathroom up front and for the kitchen sink, I would imagine, in the kitchen as well. So that is everything down underneath here. You have a tankless on-demand water heater, 50 amp electrical connection. You're going to have the Nautilus water management system, so very easy to use here, and it does have a hole down here in the bottom, so you can run your water lines up through there and keep your doors closed at all times. You have your satellite connection here, outlet and outdoor shower as well. Again, pass through storage compartment. You have your auto leveling controls right here. What I really like about these two is like, let's say you just wanna keep this door closed. Say you don't need that open, close this up. All of your water connections here don't have anything that is forcing you to bend over to get into this space. It's not underneath the slide out and this door opens up all the way so you don't have to break your back to get into this space, which I really appreciate that as well, especially being a little bit taller. You have your other propane bottle here and then you have this Dexter tow assist on here, which I'm gonna go to the other side to show you more about what that is exactly before we hop inside. As we come over here, there's a little sticker right here where you can see this tow assist. It's going to give you ABS and, or an ABS system, so an anti-lock braking system. That's going to mitigate your sway as well, and it has a towable odometer on it. But that ABS system, really, really important. That's something that is going to give you a lot more safety towing this RV, preventing it from having the wheels lock up on you or anything like that if you are to be in a situation where you have to hit the brakes hard. So that is everything on the outside. Now let's go take a look inside and see what the inside of this has to offer. As we head in here, I did also notice there's a little spot here where it looks like you could cl um, clip some leashes. It's up kind of high, so it's a little interesting spot there. And then something that should also be noted is McLean's is a priority RV network dealer. So basically what that means is this is a service related uh, system that they have where there's about 140 or so different dealerships across the US that are a part of that network that is basically going to ensure that if you are on the road and you have any sort of emergency that has to get taken care of, so let's say like you're traveling and your refrigerator stops working, it's the middle of summer, your AC stops working or anything like that that's gonna prevent you from really being able to use your fifth wheel RV, you can take this into any of those priority RV network dealers and they'll do their best to get you in the front of the line and get you back on your trip as fast as possible so that you don't miss out time camping. Now, as we walk inside here, you also have this Lippert screen defender. So this is gonna be something that you get on the Influence as well that's nice. That's gonna protect your screen door there. And then just like the overall white look that you have instead of like a black frame piece, looks pretty nice with the white in my opinion. Now, one thing that's interesting is it doesn't have a friction hinge door. So this door really just swings freely. So you gotta be careful because it really can swing open and just slam against your uh, sidewall there does have this plastic latch there to hold that in place, but it is a very free swinging door on that. Exact length on this fifth wheel is 41 feet, nine inches. So you can see right there. And then as we head inside, again, just wanna know your thoughts. Wanna know what you think, what you like and what you don't like about what you're seeing. Real quick, before we step inside of this RV, there's something that I'm really excited to talk to y'all about and I actually wanna ask you for a favor. So if you've been here for a while, you know that I pretty much never ask y'all of anything, but I'm going to right now because I started my second YouTube channel, which is called Firmly Unbound, 
Firmly Unbound is the name of my company and Firmly Unbound is an expression of exploration and freedom in work, play, and faith. And I'm really excited about what's to come on this YouTube channel. There's a link down below in the description of this video and in the comments as well where you can subscribe to Firmly Unbound. And I pretty much spent the whole last month traveling dang near coast to coast across the United States to show you what it means to live firmly unbound. So some exciting video content is coming. Can't wait to see y'all there. Immediately when I walk in, there's a couple things that really impress me that we're gonna get into. But let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think as far as just some first ideas that you have that come to mind with the overall look and aesthetic of this fifth wheel, of the floor plan layout, things like that. And then I'll get to my thoughts as you take a look around. Now with this grand design influence, this is still a wide body construction fifth wheel. So it's 101 inches wide. So you're getting a big feel in here. You also have flush slide out flooring here. So you can see both on your kitchen slide and on your living room slide, it is going to match the flooring material. There's not gonna be any lips or anything like that that you could you know, stub your toe on and it just gives it a more clean finished off look. It's also gonna have a little bit different interior aesthetic than the Solitude. So you have some really nice light gray colors in here. You can see in the cabinetry, it's like a really nice light gray, it has a really neutral tone to it. So you can really add your own decor and pops of color in here to make it what you want. And then in the island, this is probably the biggest thing that I noticed right away that just gives it a different look with how they finished out this island here giving it a nice look there. You have the LED lighting underneath here, no vents in the floor. So all of your heat ducting is ran through cabinetry. So you won't have any heat vents in the flooring. Another thing I noticed that's a little bit different from like the solitude is in the solitude, you have wood framing along all of your windows, which that's something you're not going to have here in the influence. So a little bit of a price difference there. You're going to have the pull down blackout shades. You can see it comes with these here that makes it easy to find that shade and those will pull down from there. And then in this particular floor plan layout, you have your dining table here. So this is going to be a, I always forget the word. It's like a pedestal table here. So you have that leg that comes down in the middle and then that is just secured down into the flooring. You have four chairs here. These are going to have storage underneath the chairs. And this is going to be your spot where you can eat. You have amazing window coverage here on your campsite. The only thing I wish is it had a privacy shade here in this window because surprisingly enough, they do that in the half bath door. They just don't do it on this door here, but that is an easy fix. That's something that you can easily add on yourself that does not cost much money at all. Because these are not frameless windows, the way that these windows are gonna open up is this window will slide up here. So this whole thing will open. And then this window will slide across here to open this up if I can get it to do so. I'm not gonna mess with it too much while I'm trying to hold the camera, but basically this window will slide across there and it's gonna be that one little part there that will open up here and here if you wanna open those windows. Then going across to here, these are gonna be recliner seats. So you can see it looks more like a love seat or a sofa, but they are recliners. So you'll have your buttons here to extend and recline that seat. We're not hooked up to power to allow it to do that, but these are both going to recline and lay back there. I can tell there's enough space back there that those will lay back. And then when you sit in these seats here, the island is pretty dang big. They're definitely giving you a large island in this space. So that is a lot of countertop space. It does, you know, you are kind of sitting in front of the island from this spot on the sofa, um, but that's still not gonna affect your viewing angle of the TV. Even if you are shorter, it's really not going to affect that too much. And then you will have that fireplace right across from here. It's more of a traditional looking fireplace with logs in it. So that will be an electric heat source for you in here as well, where that will really take the chill off the air. It'd be a perfect uh, piece of equipment to use on a morning like today, where it's about 50 degrees out right now, still cold enough where I can see my breath in the air. And that would really take the chill off the air here or out of the air in this fifth wheel RV without having to turn on the furnace in these kind of weather conditions. Not the biggest TV ever. This looks to be about a, probably like a 45 to, I don't know, maybe 44 inch screen TV. I don't know the exact size of it, but it's a TCL smart TV. It has Roku built into it as well. And then you have really nice looking cabinetry. It's all gonna be solid hardwood on the cabinetry here. 
audio controls there for your Rockford Fosgate audio system. And you have storage up through here, spot with a hole to go down to the TV to plug in a, um, different electronics and things like that that you could put in this space. And then these are tinted glass doors there on the cabinet with soft closed cabinet doors, which I really, really appreciate. Also, I have to mention, you have a tall slide-out box on both sides as well. So these slide-out boxes, you can see here with my height, I'm about 6'3 with the shoes on that I have today. And I mean, this thing has got to be, you know, nearing seven feet in height there with the slide-out box height. So really appreciate that. Has a nice feel in that slide-out box. Hopefully the camera was positioned where you could see both me and the top of that slide-out box in reference to that. You have your lighting up here over the island. And then this thing here, pretty dang cool they're doing this both in the influence and in the solitude a lot of features in here so first of all you have this cutting board that you'll be able to use and then let's as we kind of pull some things back here this is going to be a little rinse drain here or i guess this would be like a spot to rinse out vegetables and things like that you're going to have this water sprayer right here that will spray out water into this area this can be taken out as well so you kind of got to slide it over, which this is the only interesting thing about this sink that I think about is if you don't want all these things in the sink, you're going to have to figure out where to store them when you're not using them. And all this fluid is just the um, winterization fluid that they put in the fifth wheels for the winter time. But you can see how this sink opens up and this is going to give you a huge single basin stainless steel sink, but it's a charcoal stainless steel that looks really good. And you have the drain off to the side here. You can see the little cover for that drain as well. Lots of di different functions for this sink. You're going to have a soap dispenser built in here as well. And you have this cup cleaner here. So you put cups on top of this. I'm sure you all have seen this before, but then you just press down and it sprays up into the cup. So lots of different functions here with this sink. I think this is so cool. I would love to have this sink even just in my house. I feel like it's a really practical sink to have. I also have always preferred a single basin sink and I totally messed up just getting that all over the countertop there. So I'm going to have to find something to clean that up. But love this sink, love all the functions that it offers. And I love the look and aesthetic of it with that charcoal stainless steel. Same thing, charcoal stainless steel faucet here. It will have a, um, what's that? A nozzle there that will come off the end as well. And then a lot of these different controls here are going to be for your water and things like that with the different functions of the sink. Then as we come down underneath here, you can see the island is a different cabinet color than the rest of the cabinets in the fifth wheel so drawers and cabinets and everything with the woodwork in the island will be a little bit different open these up and you're going to have standard rv construction here for your drawers and three different drawers there that will open up they do have magnet latches on them to hold those closed outlet here in the island and then as you come down underneath the sink Nothing here indicating this is prepped for a dishwasher. Yeah, it does not look like it's prepped for a dishwasher, so you won't have that on here. But hopefully y'all have seen, there's new sinks that they make too that you can install in any RV that is a split sink where half the sink is a dishwasher, half the sink is just a traditional sink. So that is something if you want a dishwasher in your fifth wheel, there really is no reason that you can't have one. You can also get countertop dishwasher units as well if that's something that you really feel like you need. So that's everything in the island space. As we come to the kitchen space, curious your thoughts on this because they do an off-center stove here, which does put your stove right up against this wall here on the right. So especially for right-handed people, you'll be you know right up against that wall, which is something I've heard a couple people you know say that they don't prefer. So curious your thoughts on that. You're going to have outlets up underneath the cabinetry, so your outlet there plus a light switch. Storage here next to the stove. You'll have nice big space down underneath there. These are all solid surface countertops, have a really nice look to them. They have a little bit of a sparkle in them as well that doesn't usually pick up on camera, but you may be able to see it. Nice big storage next to the microwave. And then this is going to be a standard residential size microwave there. Storage up above here. And then I really love this stove. This thing is 24 inches wide. So it's a big cooktop space, has that industrial look. It's a three burner gas stove. And then you still get the really large oven here as well. It's not as tall as the Insignia oven because they're still giving you storage down underneath here, but it's going to give you all the space that I think you could ever need in a fifth wheel for your cooking space inside of this oven. I don't think you'd be limited to anything with the amount of space that's in there. Can fit pizzas, can fit a turkey, anything like that. 
So I really like that there. You're going to have this 16 cubic foot Furion refrigerator. So this will be a little bit different than the fridge and freezer that comes in a solitude as well, where the solitude will have more of that um, French door style refrigerator with the pull out drawers for the freezer. Whereas this is going to have a refrigerator on the right freezer on the left. So nice space there and nice space here. I like this though, cause it makes it so whether you're getting into your fridge or your freezer, you never have to bend over to get to anything necessarily, unless it's just stuff that you have stored down low there, but you can store your main uh, items that you use most often up high. So you don't have to bend over to get to those things. You also get a pantry in here. So you get a nice size pantry. Ooh, and it has travel five built in. So you already have a Wi-Fi router built into here as well. Love that. I think that's nice, especially when you'll see how this bunk room is set up in the back that can also be used as an office space. And then you can see all your shelving space that you have in there. Plus there's lighting in there as well when you open that up and a strap here to prevent that from swinging open into your refrigerator. Nice weight to the door as well. It feels very good quality and you have that tinted glass here. Then you come to this area, you're going to have some nice storage. You're going to have a, light, a little coffee station area here. Can see up underneath here you have some outlets and usb ports light switches and then this is just a faux tile backsplash so this is just plastic and stuck on there open this up look at all that storage that you have up there some nice deep space for storage and then interesting like the way they built the shelving in here they could have just left this as an open space but they give you a couple additional shelves which i actually think is pretty nice and like that setup on that through here you have that access to that storage in that space. You're going to have all of your controls here for the fifth wheel. This is nice because this is a motion activated uh, light sensor. So this will light up whenever you open this door. See all your light controls here. You do have 12 volt heat pads on all of your water tanks. Also, if you wanted to add a generator to this fifth wheel, it has a power switch there for your generator, slide controls, awning controls, and all of your tank levels. Also have access to your storage up here. And if you were to add an inverter, this is where the panel for your inverter prep will be at. You're going to have a Coleman mock AC system. So this here is going to be the controls for your AC system there. And then let's go back into the bunk room. As we head back, I just kind of took a look around. So you have a max air vent fan up here over the kitchen. Again, LED lighting up over this light fixture as well. And then your AC is back here and it is a ducted AC. So you can see your AC vents up in the ceiling that run through the ceiling there. You're going to have a sliding pocket door going into the bunk room. And as we step into this bunk room, the first thing I notice is you have a desk space. So if you want to work on the road, you have this dedicated desk space here. If you have kids that you're homeschooling or anything like that, this is going to be a great space for them to work. And you can see they even gave you some storage space here so they can put they're different desk items, or you can put your different desk items, plus a little bit bigger, almost like file cabinet size drawer there. If you want to plug different things down in here, you do have an outlet underneath there, and you have a hole in the desk to run wiring up to anything that you have in this space. Really think this is a nice use of the space here with how they did that, as opposed to just giving you an additional bunk. I think with the sleeping in here already, this is going to work out for most people. Unless you have a lot of kids, this is definitely going to work out. And this is just a long space through here. Such a long space. Let's see if I take just regular steps with the length of my foot. I mean, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight steps to the back here. And that's with a size 12 boot on. So that's a lot of length in this area, giving you a huge sofa here to sit down on. Plus you have the bunk up over here. This looks nice and long. I don't have a tape measure on me, but man, I imagine if you're six feet or under, you're going to have no problem fitting in this space. I'm about six one without my shoes on. And I even feel like I could sleep on this. No problem. Then this lifts up the latch system, super easy to use. It doesn't require you to use anything to pull these latches in as it's spring activated and has this little lip here. So you can just push it right up in it'll lock into place. And then you have your sofa here. So this is gonna be a nice spot to sit down and hang out. Plus, I mean, you can kind of lounge back here as well. You can see really comfortable space to kick your feet up if you want. And you could have a TV up on this tabletop if you want, or you can mount a TV up there on the wall as there is a spot to mount a TV there. And you can fit a big size TV in that space. 
that looks like that could fit at least probably like a 42 to maybe a 48 inch screen TV, at least in that area. Now this sofa here will also make into a bed. So as I, let's just go ahead and do this. I know a lot of y'all have been commenting on how you want to see more of these things kind of brought out into how they're supposed to be so you can see what it looks like in the space. So you'll open this up. You can see I'm doing this all with one hand, so it's really not difficult at all. Most difficult thing is, oh my goodness, that leg there is real tough just because it's probably never been extended out yet. So when you make this into a bed, glad we're doing this so you can see this is going to go right up to the wall. But that's a pretty nice bed space there. If I lay down on here, it's probably... Oh yeah, it's probably about six feet in length or so. Uh, my, I mean, if I filled in this space with pillows, because you do have a little bit of a gap back here, fill that space in with some pillows, I definitely am sleeping comfortable on this. And I like how it's all the same material. So you don't have a difference in material in any of these pieces. And it sits really, really flat with one another. So you're not going to feel those cracks there between the cushions quite as much. You're not going to feel that difference in the height level between those so let's put this back up you can see again super easy you can do this with one hand and drop that back in and that's it now anytime you see a sofa in a fifth wheel rv unless they're recliners they're always going to make into a bed one way or another this is a trifold sofa the only other sofa function out there is like a jackknife sofa which doesn't give you as big of a sleeping area. So this is going to give you the bigger sleeping area. But anytime you see a sofa back in a bunk room area, it's going to make into a bed back here. Then you have all your storage space. Look at all these shelves you have right here next to the desk. I mean, you could fit a ton of stuff back in there and back through here. Heating ran through the cabinetry. Then you have four drawers that will pull out in this space. Nice looking candles here as well. They have this kind of geometric design on that. And then you have shelving back through here and look at that look at the wardrobe storage you have to hang stuff in here plus i mean a duffel bag will fit back in this space as well that's really a great use of storage space and then finally this bed here is massive i mean two grown adults certainly can fit on this bed this looks like it's at least a, close to the size of like a full-size mattress if not getting closer to like maybe almost the width of a queen Maybe not quite, but that is a big mattress that you have there with a ladder to get up there as well. And a little railing here for safety. AC right up above there. AC is ducted through these spaces as well. And then you have your half bath. So half bath going back into here. You have a nice big stainless steel sink. Mirror here. Multiple hooks there to hang towels, coats, whatever you may want. You can see there is the privacy shade built into this window. However, why they don't do it from the bottom up doesn't really make sense to me because that way you could have this all blocked off but still like see outside but have your privacy that should be flipped around in my opinion you have a standard four inch fan here nothing crazy about that um, that's going to be a more budget fan option but check this out this is amazing this is some really deep storage back through here so you can fit a lot of different things back through here if you have somebody living back in this space and this is their designated bathroom, the stuff that they need to get ready, be able to fit most of all of it in there. Magnet here to stop this door from hitting the wall. So that'll catch it right there. And then of course, this is a porcelain foot flush toilet with plenty of room around the toilet on both sides. So no problem getting in and out of there. Door coming in and out also has that screen defender. So it will protect your screen door on that door as well. You have your AC controls right here in the bunk room. So this is also really nice. So you can control this AC right here without having to move throughout the fifth wheel. And then that's pretty much everything in that space. So let's go up to the bedroom. You have these steps here with space underneath there to store your shoes and whatnot if you choose to do so. You have a grab handle going up the step, motion activated light going up the step as well. And then going into this bathroom. Really nice space in here. The biggest thing I like about the Grand Design fifth wheel bathrooms with their influence and solitude is their flooring here in the shower actually goes down to the base level of the floor here. So what that does is gives you a ton more ceiling height in this shower, whereas a lot of fifth wheels, they'll 
they have like a gap up here where the flooring in the shower sits almost where this is, whereas this shower sits where this floor level's at. So it's kind of recessed down into there. It gives you great shower height in this space. You're going to have an adjustable shower head here. You can see it's not currently up in this position, but this will move up and down so you can adjust that shower height. LED light bar in here as well, so you have lighting in this space at night, especially since there's actually no skylight in this shower. But you don't really need it because the ceiling height in here is still great. If I step into the shower, oh yeah, there's at least, I mean, what's my boots on? I have at least a couple, probably an additional three inches. So I'd imagine you could be at least six, six and fit in that shower. You're going to have storage back through here. And also this shower is a molded fiberglass one piece shower here. So no seams in the shower as well. And that fiberglass molding goes all the way up to the ceiling there. So it looks really clean. Storage space back through here. Again, porcelain foot flush toilet. Plenty of room on both sides for your shoulders. No matter what size you are, you're gonna fit comfortably in there. You have your towel hooks, and then you have a big stainless steel sink here with a black faucet. Can easily fit adult size hands in here, wash your face in here. And you don't have a medicine cabinet that is gonna get in the way either because it's pushed back far enough where you're really not gonna have this getting in the way of if you're, you know, like, spitting out toothpaste or rinsing out your mouth with the water from the sink or anything, you're not going to have to worry about hitting your head on the mat on the medicine cabinet. Three shelves in there. You have your Furion tankless on-demand water heater controls right here in the bathroom where they should be. Outlets here and storage down underneath this space here. So you'll have that storage down through there. Soft clothes still on the cabinets in here. And as we go back into the bedroom, it's going to look very similar to the solitude bedroom. There's a couple differences. Um, one of the first differences I noticed is you're not getting pillows with the influence where you do get them in the solitude and the headboard setup is a little bit different, which I'll get to in just a second. But this is a king size bed underneath here. You also don't have like the shelving built in underneath here, but look at how clean that storage looks under there. I mean, you can tell they're not really skimping out on the details as it just looks so clean and finished underneath here. They also have the corners kind of edged off here so you don't bang your knee into a corner of wood there if you're walking around the bed. Mattress here is pretty standard. Um, definitely not the best mattress ever. You may want to potentially upgrade that. And then their headboard area is really nice or really cool what they did here because it's actually a flip down little countertop here. So if I go up to here and kind of push that in, that's going to flip down and now it just looks like it's part of your headboard but it also doubles as a shelf so i think that's a clever little idea that they worked in there that i think makes a lot of sense and is practical so you can store some things on that shelf you do have some little bedside shelves as well and then outlets and usb ports on this side of the bed and of course on this side of the bed over here Windows on both sides with pull-down blackout shades, individual puck lights above each person sleeping there, and then ceiling height in here. On my tiptoes, my head doesn't touch the ceiling, so it's gotta be at least like, probably six, seven, maybe six, eight on the ceiling height in this space. Really surprised to see you still get a TV in the bedroom as well, so love that. It's a TCL TV in here, has a really thin bezel on the TV, looks really nice. Nice big campsite window. They incorporated this pull-out storage space here. So you have this hidden storage down underneath there with magnets that hold that in place. Six drawers that pull out. And then you have spot here for washer and dryer prep or just additional wardrobe storage here. So if you wanted to do a washer and dryer, you can do a stackable washer and dryer in this area. I've always liked the way that Grand Design does their closets. Feels really well thought out. Look at all the shelving that you have built back into there. You have your clothing rod here, and then you have more shelving back into here as well. Especially when you have this door open, it gives you lots of room to walk on this side of the bed. It is a little bit more narrow over here where you will have to sidestep that bed on this side. But overall, I think it's a really great looking bedroom space. Very comfortable. This space here just feels really large as this is more of a super slide. So this slide goes out really far this way, which opens up this floor space quite a bit. So I really like that. And that is just about everything on this fifth wheel RV. Now, as far as price, 
Hopefully I will have got it on text on the screen at some point in time because they don't have it displayed anywhere here. Um, another thing I want to mention though, real quick with the slides closed, I can tell right away you can get to the, the refrigerator side of your refrigerator with the slides closed. You can get into the bunk room from that second door outside there with the slides closed. So you'll be able to get into that space and everything up here you're going to be able to get up into with the slides closed. So that is nice as well. Oh, also, I totally missed this. There's a little storage space down underneath here with your pet bulls. So you have some pet bulls here. You can also take this out if you don't want the pet bulls. I'm sure that's real easy, but I don't know that. Uh... Oh yeah, there is. There's going to be like a drawer there if you take these out. So you have pet bulls here. If you have some pets come along with you, you're going to have a designated spot for their food there that tucks away as well. And that is just about everything y'all. So would love to hear your thoughts. Let me know what you think about this fifth wheel, what you like, what you don't like. And if you could see yourself camping or living in a fifth wheel RV like this. And again, if you are interested in this grand design influence and you live in Texas or Oklahoma, I am here to help. You can text me at the number on the screen. Would love to help you out and get you connected with McLean's where they will definitely take care of you and make sure you have a great experience, either trading in an RV that you already have or purchasing your next RV. Whatever you're looking to do, they're here to help. We're here to help and would love to help you out. So that's all I got for y'all. Until next time, live firmly on bounds.